In the days of Smash 64 and Melee, the only way to play with other human opponents was to scoot over and make some room on the couch. Players eagerly gathered around CRTs at locals and Smash Fests, sometimes traveling across the world just for an opportunity to click sticks with the Smasher sitting next to them. This naturally made for a metagame that developed very slowly, as it would be some time before the stories of rival players facing off from the West Coast, East Coast, and even Japan were written. Back up! Back up! Enter 2008, and Super Smash Bros. Brawl was the first in the series to feature an online mode, allowing players to face off against anyone in the world without getting off their couch. Although online gaming had been around for a while before this, Brawls was about the least you could ask for. In order to play with specific people, you had to exchange lengthy friend codes, which, well, I guess friend codes are still a thing now, aren't they? Come on, Nintendo. If you wanted to play against random opponents, there was no ranking system, and you couldn't even set your preferred rules, so you'd almost always wind up playing free-for-alls on random stages with items. Oh, and it was laggy. If you think Ultimate Online is bad, just... just be glad you didn't have to play Brawl Wi-Fi. But despite all of the negatives, online play was still an amazing resource for players living in regions without a strong competitive scene. Many of Brawl's greatest competitive players had started off as Wi-Fi warriors, and the metagame was more connected than ever before. Eight years later, Smash 4 improved many things about the online format. It introduced the For Fun and For Glory modes that gave players a choice between casual and, somewhat, competitive rule sets when fighting random opponents. The lag was still pretty bad, but online play was a great way for up-and-coming streamers to have an infinite supply of opponents to demolish, and online tournaments began increasing in popularity. As much criticism as it rightfully receives, Smash Ultimate's online mode improved upon the formula even further. They introduced a ranking system, albeit bizarre, called GSP that gives players more incentive to improve or, you know, cheese people and dip after one win, and a great arena mode that lets players spectate while others face off. These improvements, along with the overall popularity of Smash Ultimate, made online tournaments more popular as well, although they were still far less preferred than IRL offline tournaments. That is, until the world was flipped on its back with the pandemic, making offline tournaments impossible or at the very least a major health risk. Online tournaments have become the only practical way to compete, but they may be slowly dying. In this video, we'll take a look at the progression of online tournaments during these historic times and determine what the future of competitive Smash is looking like. But first, our question of the day. How often do you compete in online tournaments? Let us know in the comments and feel free to share your craziest online tournament stories with us. Fortunately, playing online is not the only way for you to improve these days. You can find a bunch of great resources on ProGuides.com. We've got guides for every character in the game, interactive live classes, updated course programs, and even a hub that gives you instant access to coaches through Instapro. Shortly after the pandemic hit, Moist Critical and Alpha Rad were quick to catch the falling Smash community with an exciting series of online tournaments known as the Quarantine Series. The events were free to enter, yet had prize pools in the thousands of dollars. Naturally, these tournaments received massive entry counts, with the first open event getting over 5,000 players registered. Right off the bat, the issues with running online tournaments were clear, however. In a now infamous moment, Grand Finals of the very first Invitational event was interrupted by a disconnection between the two players. This resulted in a neck-and-neck -neck pull of the stream audience to determine the outcome, eventually resulting in a game loss to the disconnecting player. Issues like this were not uncommon, and they weren't limited to just disconnects. Players were given the ability to request a lag test involving one of the tournament organizers, which slowed the brackets down a ton and resulted in more controversial results being changed. Additionally, check the early rounds of any of these events, and you'll see an amazing amount of players being DQ'd for not showing up. This is to be expected when signing up is free and requires no commitment, but the no-shows resulted in less reliable seating, and in some cases, more wasted time. After numerous controversies and other issues with Online Smash, the organizers of the Quarantine series decided to change their rule set to a less competitive format, with random character choice mandated. This definitely quelled some of the issues, but online tournaments had already established a sketchy reputation for themselves, and that wasn't going anywhere. 
The Quarantine series was just one of many online events. Major streamers such as Hungrybox also hosted and continue to host tournaments, and not following the more laid-back random character rules. On top of the issues with lag and difficult bracket management, the environment clearly has shown signs of boosting some characters and playstyles. Sonics, a Sonic player, began winning and placing in many of these events, playing a very defensive style of Sonic, which has been seen as very boring and uninteresting by mass audiences. It isn't just Sonic, though. Characters like Ness, Game & Watch, and Cloud are just a few of those that have dominated the online meta in ways they never did offline. It's even gotten to the point where some events ban specific characters just due to their low reputation among online players and audiences. Smashers are truly passionate about their game, though, as all of this was not enough to kill the popularity of online tournaments in general, but two more factors were on the way that would shake up the community in many ways. Around the end of June, a long-awaited project was completed and released. Project Slippy, developed by a dedicated community member known as Fizzy, is a modified version of Super Smash Bros. Melee that enables something known as Rollback Netcode for the Legendary Fighter. To add some context, the pandemic affected Melee tournaments just as much as Ultimate, and the Melee community began organizing many online events as well. Although playing online with a vanilla copy of Melee and a GameCube is impossible, Melee netplay has long been achieved through the Dolphin emulator thanks to lots of efforts from the community. In fact, Melee netplay was already smoother than Ultimate's, but Slippy changes everything. Rollback netcode is pretty complicated, but to give you a general idea, the game predicts your next input on every frame, and when this prediction is incorrect, the game will switch the result in real time to your actual input. If that still sounds like witchcraft, we recommend that you do some of your own research on the topic, but if you watch or play Melee on Slippy, you'll see how big of a deal this is. On a solid connection with players in the same region, this new netplay is literally as lagless as playing offline. And with a worse connection, the overall experience is still relatively smooth, but with a few teleport effects here and there. Why is this relevant to Smash Ultimate Online? Well, given the ease of access and how incredible the Slippy Online experience is, many Ultimate players began learning Melee. This quickly began to subtract from the popularity of online Ultimate events. What happened next in the community is not easy to talk about, so we'll spare you the details. In the beginning of July, many major allegations arose, tarnishing the reputations of some of the Smash community's most prominent public figures. The game had just received a new fighter along with many exciting buffs to lower tier characters, but for those deeply invested in the community, these recent events have sadly diminished our enthusiasm for Smash. Considering the pandemic is still a factor, online tournaments remain the only way to play competitive Smash, and the overwhelming combination of existing online issues coupled with recent events would discourage any community. Get On My Line, a long-scheduled online major, still received over 3,000 entrants, but was the only event this July to feature over 1,000 entrants. Some event series have also discontinued completely, which in a few cases is related to association to players involved in the recent scandals. So, with such a struggle, are online tournaments dying? And what does all of this mean for the future of competitive Smash? Well, considering how many detriments there are, online tournaments are still doing pretty well. Medium-sized weekly events like the Juice Box are still reaching their cap, and multiple upcoming events already have over 500 entrants registered, so it seems like the core online tournament audience is still ready to play anywhere they can. Major streamers like Tweak are still competing as well and keeping the attention on the game. All of this really shows that Smash Ultimate is loved and popular enough to remain relevant no matter what the circumstance, and things may be getting much better in the not-so-distant future. It's too soon to say for sure, but there's a lot of talk about vaccines being very close, and the prospect of offline events slowly returning is seeming less like a dream. Being able to compete without the shackles of online lag is guaranteed to boost enthusiasm to never-before-seen heights, and may even bring the game to a new level of popularity, as long as it's safe, of course. This optimism is not scarce either. Major offline tournaments like 2GG Final Saga are already scheduled for next year, and hope for the future is growing everywhere you look. Smash Online has come so far since the primitive days of Brawl, and in recent times, it's been put to the ultimate test. 
The future is always uncertain, but if players are still registering for tournaments in a laggy online format during a pandemic in the wake of massive controversies that shatter the community, and when there's also another competitive Smash game that you can play online with no lag, we've got to conclude that nothing will kill Smash Ultimate and the infinite love that its players have for the game. Jump, bro. Hey, oh my god, he oh, knew it! No. We hope for a safe and bright future for all of competitive Smash. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to Pro Guides and turn on notifications so you can be the first to watch every upload, and we'll catch you in the next one.